all of you. Thanks for being here uh, to encourage Sadia. <laughs> and Sadia has completed his uh, PhD. Yeah, he has worked with us for almost two years. Yes, he's a student from uh, PJ PSAU, the new university of uh, Telangana. It's Telangana Agriculture University. And then um, when he came here. Uh, I told him like uh, there are a couple of areas wherein you can work and then you can choose your area of interest. He had some working experience with iron and zinc with rice and then he said that this is the area which I would like to work. And that's how and, uh, this, and just before that we have identified some lines and we are developing some populations around that and that became very handy. And now I welcome Sadaya to take over. Uh, good afternoon everyone and today I am here to my present my research findings before you. I have done my research in groundnut crop on research topic. My research topic is genetic and QTL analysis for kernel iron and zinc concentrations in groundnut. Before going into the details of my work, uh, let me have some brief introduction about groundnut crop and its significance. Uh, we all know that uh, groundnut is an important oilseed crop. Besides that, uh, it can also be served as a good, good food crop uh, since there are so many confectionery type varieties which can be consumed uh, directly. And it can it can also serve as a good fodder crop because of its hulms, uh, hulms and uh, cakes of oil extraction makes the uh, groundnut crop uh, perfect for the perfect food, nutritious food for the livestock also. So, and uh, coming to the produ production point of view, groundnut uh, for groundnut, India is the second largest producer with a total production of uh, nearly 9.7 million tons. As I have said, as I have said earlier, uh, groundnut is an important oil seed crop. Besides that, there are other so, there are other uh, nutri uh, nutrients are also present like uh, several proteins, uh, proteins and several vitamins. And uh, here in this case, uh, several micronutrients like uh, calcium, iron, as well as zinc. So all these things uh, put together, uh, uh, il il they will make a groundnut a perfect crop uh, to fight uh, to uh, fight against uh, to combat against micronutrient malnutrition, which is prevailing in the world. So. Uh, coming to the micronutrient malnutrition status in the world, uh, please uh, go through the IFPRA web websites and uh, Hunger Notes web page of 2015 and uh, information is available in WHO website also. So to know more about the facts of malnutrition as well as the statistics where uh, actually the concentration is more, uh, especially in South Asiatic and uh, African countries. So all the details will be available in those websites. Uh, since uh, groundnut as I have said uh, very much rich in nutrients. Uh, it can be used as a ready-to-use therapeutic food. Uh, this uh, ready-to-use therapeutic food uh, is uh, such a food thing. It means it is an instant food item which can be readily supplied to the affected people, malnutrition affected pe people. Basically, this this uh, RUT TFs are supplied with added with uh, essential nutrients like minerals and vitamins, so that uh, uh, there will be a uh, means uh, sudden or uh, uh, sudden uh, in impact on uh, affected people will be there. So. Uh, groundnut uh, products uh, uh, will act uh, uh, like uh, products like uh, plumpy nut and uh, peanut butter. They will act as a ready-to-use therapeutic foods uh, because uh, the uh, the base material of uh, peanut uh, uh, added with some essential minerals and nutrients uh, makes the perfect uh, combination of uh, perfect for uh, uh, to supply uh, malnutrition affected uh, people in the people in the African countries especially. So. Our motto is here, uh, as I have said, uh, these uh, products are supplied with, added with some essential minerals and nutrients. And, uh, but uh, the scope, but there is a little, there is a, so much scope of improvement in the crop itself of, uh, for those nutrients and micronutrients. Uh, so, uh, for the, uh, so improvement is possible. For any trite improvement, uh, we can say that uh, genetic variability is essential for uh, improvement of a particular trite. And uh, there are some reports regarding the variability of uh, iron and zinc status in case of groundnut. So we can say that uh, improvement of these mineral contents is possible. And before going into the improvement uh, uh, or breeding for any uh, any content, it is always advisable to know, uh, understand the gene actions associated with the trite, so that we can frame the uh, breeding objectives accordingly. Uh, so it is very much essential to understand the gene action as well as if it is possible to identify the genomic regions associated with the trite, uh, so that we can identify those uh, uh, genomic regions or QTLs, then we can transfer those trites, uh, re regions into the high yielding backgrounds uh, so that we can have a dual benefit of yield as well as more amount of nutrients. So with this uh, background uh, of uh, studying gene action and identifying genomic regions, I have taken up the present study with the following objectives. 
So these are my broad, uh, these are my objectives. Uh, first one is to develop a real mapping population uh, using contrasting parents for iron and zinc, and to identify the molecular markers associated with the genomic regions uh, controlling the iron and zinc concentration in uh, mapping population. And after that, once identified markers, uh, they were uh, validated in some other po other population uh, to confirm whether the act whether markers are actually linked to the trites or not. And uh, for lastly, to study the gene action uh, governing that uh, iron and zinc uh, concentration, uh, and also along with the gene action uh, to check whether any epistatic interactions are there uh, governing this uh, iron and zinc concentration using generation analysis. So. Whatever the data I have collected on the observation, it was subjected to following uh, statistical pack analysis. Uh, first one is analysis of variance uh, to check the partitioning of uh, variation uh, uh, among the different treatments as well as uh, whether the significant variation is there or not to check that one. We have done analysis of variance and also we have done, uh, we have studied some genetic parameters like uh, phenotypic coefficient of variation, genotypic coefficient of variation and heritability and genetic advance to know the impact of uh, environment on our trites as well as to know the transferability of our uh, iron and zinc to the progeny as well as if uh, there is any possibility of improvement uh, in the succeeding generation if uh, thorough selection is made uh, to check all these things we have we have studied these genetic parameters followed by single marker analysis uh, to identify the markers associated with the putative genomic regions of iron and zinc governing iron and zinc and after that generation mean analysis uh, was done to identify the gene actions as well as uh, to check the presence of uh, some epistatic interactions in the go governing uh, iron and zinc concentrations followed by some correlation studies uh, to check uh, level of association of our iron and zinc trites with some other yield parameters. So coming to the first part that is uh, single marker analysis, uh, first of all we have taken parental lines uh, that is ICGV 60 double line and 93468, uh, they, are, uh, they are actually contrasting for iron and zinc status, 60 double line is the higher parent whereas uh, 93468 is having a lower concentration of iron and zinc. So these two parents were crossed and uh, whatever the developed F1 was self uh, to have F2 mapping population and the population size was around 184 lines. So DNA was extracted from uh, these ma this mapping population as well as from the parental lines using CETA method. So before going into, going into the genotyping of the parental, uh, geno genotyping of the mapping population, we have done some polymorphism studies to identify the polymorphic markers between the parents. For that uh, what we have done is uh, we have taken some 300 SSR markers uh, to check uh, the polymorphic markers but we could able to get uh, only 33 SSR markers out of 300 uh, showing uh, a clear cut uh, amplification polymorphism between the parents. This made us uh, to compromise for uh, single, single marker analysis otherwise uh, uh, we would have gone for uh, construction of maps and uh, QT analysis. So with this uh, small amount of uh, small number of 33 markers we cannot uh, cover all 20 linkage groups in case of groundnut and it is impossible to construct a linkage map as well as to go for QT analysis. That's why we ended up with a single marker analysis uh, to identify the markers associated with the putative genomic regions. And after that whatever these uh, identified markers are there, we, we used these markers for uh, genotyping of the population. So this is the list of markers which I've used uh, for my study. So once the PCRs were done, uh, we have uh, then uh, the products was used to, uh, the product was analyzed using capillary electrophoresis. The product of uh, capillary electrophoresis was analyzed using gene mapper software. In that uh, we will get some peak patterns uh, including size, mentioning the size of the base pair size of a particular uh, marker on that particular line. And based upon that uh, we, have given some, uh, we have given scoring to the entire population. If a particular peak is corresponding to that of parent A type we have given a score of A. So, uh, similarly with that of parent B given a score of uh, A, B as well as H for uh, having heterozygous. So this, with this uh, we have done, uh, we, uh, like this we have done uh, genotyping work. So coming to the phenotyping portion, uh, the experiment was uh, consisting of parental lines uh, as well as F23 mapping population. They were shown in the alphizols of Ekrisat. We have used uh, alpha lattice design for our study with a spacing of uh, 60 by 10 centimeters between the rows as well as between the plants. Before going into the sowing, uh, we have done some initial soil analysis to check iron and zinc status present in the soil and uh, in all the locations we got uh, uh, iron and zinc of above critical limits that indicates the presence of insufficient levels of iron and zinc are there in our experiment plot and we ensure that we ensure that there is, there is no toxicity of iron and zinc at the same time in, the, in that uh, experimental plot. So for that uh, analysis of uh, iron and zinc 
uh, in the soil as well as in the kernels, we have used ICPOS method that is inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy method. Uh, it was used for estimation of iron and zinc status. So this is the details regarding the iron and zinc status in the parental lines as well as in the population. Uh, so details of defatted iron and zinc means after elimination of fatty acid component, this is the value of uh, these are the values of iron and zinc in the parents as well as the population. So whereas our higher parent that is 6099 has recorded a mean value of 52 for iron and 79 for zinc. Whereas 93468 has recorded mean value of 37 for iron and 65 for zinc. So our population uh, recorded a mean value of 45 and 76. And if you look at the range, it, it was around 31 to 61 for iron and 59 to 90 for zinc concentration. So the range was very broad. It indicates that uh, there are some significant transgressive segregants are also present, which are, uh, which are performing beyond the parental lines. That is both lower side and as well as higher side. So we can identify those transgressive segregants. We can use those uh, lines for further uh, uh, analysis also. So this is the histogram representing the normal distribution pattern of uh, uh, normal distribution pattern of population for our trites that is iron and zinc concentration. Uh, the, these are the parental lines P1 and P2. So P after uh, there are some lines uh, uh, beyond the parental lines and most of the lines which are uh, which are performing outperforming uh, parents are uh, which are outperforming majorly for uh, parent one that is higher parent uh, 6099. So this is the normal ANOVA table for uh, uh, distribution of variation and presence of significant variation in the material. Uh, so our target rates that is iron and zinc concentrations, uh, they have given a significant uh, uh, significance for uh, analysis of significant value for uh, iron and zinc status. This indicates presence of sufficient variation in the population for our trials. And uh, along with iron and zinc concentrations, there are some other trials also showing significant variation in the population except for the protein content. So this is the descriptive statistics of the population. Uh, here our emphasis was mainly on CV and skewness with the mean and range values. And if you look at uh, iron and zinc status, it has recorded a CV of 13 as well as 7. 13 for iron concentration and 7 for zinc. And they have recorded a skewness value of 0.5 that is for kernel iron concentration. Whereas 0.1 for say kernel zinc concentration. This indicates a moderate uh, skewness value uh, for iron concentration and low skewness value for zinc. That means uh, the, uh, the population is showing uh, some nor uh, uh, normal distribution pattern with a low to moderate skewness value. So besides uh, that, uh, we have done some genetic parameter studies also to check uh, what is the status of iron and zinc regarding these genetic parameters. And uh, to start with uh, PCV and GCV, that is phenotypic coefficient of variation and genotypic coefficient of variation. So our iron and zinc concentrations, they have recorded a uh, low values for uh, PCV and GCV. But if you compare among themselves, means between those so PCV and GCV, PCV values are higher compared to that of GCV, suggesting uh, so, uh, some influence of environment on those trites. And if you look at the heritability portion, uh, there is a, uh, these iron and zinc concentration, they have recorded a higher heritability uh, so that uh, we, can, uh, we can ensure that uh, these two trites are uh, transferable, easily transferable to that of progeny. And uh, coming to the genetic advance as well as genetic advance as percent of mean, uh, there are some low values for iron and zinc status means uh, we can ensure a low improvement or a considerable improvement uh, upon selections upon rigid selections uh, we can ensure uh, a considerable improvement of uh, these trites in the progeny. So after that uh, we have done some principal component analysis uh, to understand the level of association with the other trites our iron and zinc. So if you look at and this level of association is decided based upon the angle between the variables. Uh, here if you observe uh, iron and zinc, there is a, so if you look at the iron and zinc with that of yield, our major concern is yield only. So here uh, the almost iron and zinc is uh, having a 90 degree angle with that of power yield, indicating uh, a non-significant association between these two trades. Means if you are selecting for iron and zinc, there won't be any penalty in yield. You can uh, have a both uh, dual benefit of having a higher iron and zinc as well as higher yield also. So if you look at uh, uh, volic and linoleic acid, uh, uh, here uh, they are making almost a 180 degree angle between them. Uh, so they are actually uh, very much significantly negatively correlated among themselves. So after that we have done some correlation studies for uh, identifying the association. So 
here uh, none of the trite none of the yield parameter has shown a significant association with our iron and zinc status if you look at the 100 kernel weight or pod yield or oil content or protein content folic acid or linoleic acid none of the trite has shown any association with iron and zinc status so thus uh, we can say that uh, while selecting for iron and zinc concentration you need not uh, bother about or you need not have any penalty of all these trites uh, you can have a dual benefit or multiple benefit of uh, having more amount of yield more of oil content and as well as more of iron and zinc status and uh, if you look at the correlation between iron and zinc they are uh, significantly positively correlated with a value of uh, 0.49 almost 50% correlation was observed between these two trites this is the graphical representation uh, representing uh, relationship between iron and zinc first one and after that uh, pod yield with that of iron concentration and pod yield with that of zinc concentration first one is having a significant uh, association whereas uh, uh, general iron concentration and zinc concentration they have not shown any kind of association with the yield so coming to the single market analysis portion we have so we have both the genotypic as well as uh, phenotypic data then we have gone for uh, single market analysis to identify the markers associated with the putative genomic regions so we have used those 33 markers out of that uh, we got uh, uh, three markers each for iron as well as for zinc but uh, those three markers are having very low phenotypic they are contributing very low phenotypic uh, variation percentage in that uh, sec 9 g 05 is common for uh, both iron and zinc uh, they are contributing uh, nearly 6.6% of phenotypic variation for iron as well as for zinc concentration so this is the table uh, indicating the significance of markers as well as with their phenotypic phenotypic variation percentage uh, sec 9g is uh, sec 9g 05 is uh, giving a percentage of 6.34 as well as 6.01 for iron and zinc concentrations respectively so coming to the validation portion so whatever the ma markers identified in the mapping population in the genotyping population we have validated in another population that is 6040 crossed with 8714 these are also parental lines having contrasting levels of uh, iron and zinc 6040 is having higher concentration whereas 8714 141 is a lower one so in this what we have done is whatever the entries in that population which are showing a similarity of similar to that of parent a allele we have taken out the we have picked those samples and we have given for uh, biochemical analysis and uh, we have given nearly 34 entries uh, for biochemical analysis out of that 19 they have recorded higher value of higher iron fatted fatted iron concentration that is here we have we have not removed a fatty acid composition and it was a range it was ranged from 21 to 27 mg per kg whereas out of 34 nearly 22 entries they have recorded higher fatted zinc concentration with a range of 40 to 45 mg per kg so this completes our uh, Uh, first portion that is single marker analysis and uh, coming to the second experiment that is generation analysis this was conducted to identify the gene actions associated with our trites as well as to identify epistatic interactions governing our trites so before uh, before going into the generation analysis we need to have some generations some populations for that and uh, for that we have what we have done is uh, we have taken six basic generations that is p1 parent 1 parent 2 as well as f1 by crossing of both the parents and uh, f2 by selfing of f1 and back cross one and back cross two generations uh, we have developed these six generation for evaluation and these six generations were developed for two process one is for 60408741 and another one is 6099 and 93468 uh, in these two crosses uh, they, these two crosses are as i said earlier uh, they are they are having contrasting levels of iron and zinc status so this is the pedigree of uh, parental lines which i have taken so all are of all are of uh, confectionery types with uh, virginia bunching habit uh, except for 93468 uh, all are of medium duration and if you look at the iron and zinc status 6040 and 6099 are having almost uh, uh, 56 uh, mg per kg of defatted iron and nearly 80 to 81 uh, uh, mg per kg of uh, defatted zinc concentration whereas our lower pairs that is 87141 and 93468 are having nearly 45 mg per kg defatted iron as well as 55 to 60 uh, zinc mg per kg zinc concentration fat defatted zinc concentration so whatever the generations we have developed uh, we have evaluated those uh, six generations of both the crosses uh, in the uh, after after another season so we have used a compact family block design for the evaluation of uh, material 
so that uh, this design was basically used to uh, have a perfect understanding of uh, between the crosses, both the crosses as well as among the generations of a particular cross. So by adopting this particular design, we could be able to identify actual uh, association and actual influence uh, among the generations as well as from the between the crosses. So in that uh, each block comprised of uh, one row each of uh, parents as well as F1 and two rows of back cross generations and eight rows of F2 generation. So uh, the, we have followed a spacing of 30 by 10. So this is the analysis of variance uh, for uh, generation mean analysis. Uh, all the trials uh, they have shown significant variation uh, for uh, among the generations as well as for between the crosses also. So we have proceeded for uh, generation mean analysis for these trials. This is the mean performance table. Uh, here if you look at the fatted portion, here uh, we have not removed fatty acid component. So, uh, we did not uh, estimate oil concentration for uh, this for this experiment since we, do, we we did not get sufficient amount of seed for uh, oil estimation. So here uh, parent 1 has given a higher value followed by backcross generations that is B1 and B2 and our P2, P2 recorded a lowest value for iron and zinc status. This can be expected that maybe increased hetero homozygosity in the backcross generations might have led to the improved uh, iron and zinc status in the power in the in those generations. So same case was observed for uh, second cross also, here a slight higher value was recorded in case of back cross generation instead of parent 1, uh, a 1 percent, a 1 gram of, uh, 1 milligram higher value was recorded in back cross generation followed by parent, parent 1, followed by again uh, back, same trend back cross generation 2 as well as uh, F1 and F2, F2 and F1 followed by lastly parent 2. So here uh, we, we have done some genetic parameter studies in the population, uh, here also we got same kind of pattern with the low PCV and GCV values and uh, higher PCV value compared to that of GCV. But uh, if you look at the heritability portion, uh, here we got in the first cross we got a higher heritability of 70 percent that indicates the uh, easy transferability of these traits to the progeny as well as a moderate genetic advance as percent of mean was observed for iron and zinc. That means we can expect some kind of improvement in the succeeding generation if we follow a thorough selection procedure. and. Uh, for uh, second, uh, for second cross, that is 6099 and 93468, same trend was observed, but a moderate heritability was observed in case of uh, second cross, and uh, a moderate uh, genetic advance percentage of mean was also observed in the same kind of uh, pattern for genetic advance means was genetic advance as percent of mean was observed in the second cross. So coming to the actual uh, generation mean analysis, so. Before going into the estimation of uh, gene acting, gene action components, first of all we have to check uh, whether presence, uh, whether epistatic interactions are present or not. For that we have to, we have to analyze, uh, we have to go for some scaling test that is A, B, C, A, B and C. So significance of either of the, any of the scaling test indicates that presence of epistatic interactions. So there are some, there will be some chances of uh, epistatic interactions governing our trials. So if, if none of the scaling test is uh, significant means we can clearly say that additive dominance model is sufficient either additive gene action or dominant gene action is governing that trait. So here if you observe uh, for all the traits uh, either B either A or B or both or, uh, or all the scales were significant. So we can we can proceed for uh, generation analysis that is six parameter model. Here six parameters constitute about uh, constitutes of uh, M, D, H, I, J, L. M stands for midparental value and D for additive gene action, H for dominance and I, J, L are uh, epistatic interactions. I stands for additive into additive, J stands for additive into dominance and L stands for dominance into dominance. And if you look at our target traits that is uh, iron and zinc status, uh, additive gene action as well as additive into additive kind of gene action was observed. So here this one, D, D component is showing significance as well as additive into additive component is also showing significance. Thus we can ensure that uh, this trait is governed by additive gene action mostly and uh, if uh, thorough selections were made, uh, we can improve. There is a possibility of improvement in the succeeding generations also. And here we got uh, a significant value for H uh, for iron concentration. Uh, however, uh, it, it may not be possible to improve dominance component. Uh, if, if it is not possible to improve a trite if it is governed by dominance component in case of groundnut because hardly we don't have any hybrid combinations in groundnut and it is a basically strict self pollinated crop. So if you look at the second cross similar kind of pattern here also we observe 
uh, all the scaling tests uh, were uh, significant for iron concentration and A and C were significant for zinc concentration and uh, if you look at the six parameters only D component that is additive gene action is showing significance uh, as that of the first cross same uh, same uh, pattern was observed in case of first cross also so this confirms that uh, uh, if any if thorough selections were made in the succeeding uh, in the generations we can ensure that there may be a possible there will be a definite possibility of improvement of these traits so in both the crosses we got a duplicate kind of gene interactions where uh, this uh, this uh, this was judged based upon the dominance and and uh, yeah, dominance into dominance component that is h as well as l if do, both h and l are having opposite signs then we can say that do, uh, that uh, particular interaction is of duplicate type and if uh, h and l are having similar signs means we can say that uh, that is complementary gene action so if it is uh, governed by complementary gene action then we can say that uh, improvement will, may, will be there because uh, both the gene action will complement each other uh, whereas in case of duplicate interactions uh, one um, compensating effect will be there for uh, dominance as well as uh, dom uh, dominance into dominance so further improvement may not be possible but for our groundnut sake uh, groundnut point of view uh, since it is governed by additive gene action we can ensure that uh, sufficient improvement of these traits some correlation studies were also made uh, to understand the association uh, where all we got the same kind of pattern for iron and zinc uh, showing sig uh, significant uh, positive correlation between those two traits uh, but uh, it, it doesn't have any correlation with iron and zinc uh, content uh, concentrations they not have any correlations with uh, pod yield and another, none of the right but uh, 100 kernel weight recorded a positive correlation with that of zinc concentrations maybe the, the uh, with this we can say that maybe improved seed size may have might be having some uh, increased uh, zinc concentration so after that uh, we have done some localization work that is to identify which part of the kernel is contributing maximum towards iron and zinc so for that we have taken some five genotypes uh, the uh, first two and the last two are of uh, my uh, research topic studies and uh, the third one that is 93114 is a ruling variety so we have we, we have taken these five varieties for our study and if you look at and we have done uh, we have we have separated the seed into seed coat cartilage and embryo and we have gain it for analysis to check which part of the kernel is contributing maximum so if you observe the iron seed coat is contributing maximum followed by seed coat is contributing maximum followed by embryo in most of the cases seed coat and embryo are having higher concentration of iron but if you look at the proportional weight of that particular component to the total weight uh, seed coat is contributing only 3% that is 3.6% to the total weight and embryonic portion is contributing only 4% of total weight but majority of the bulk of the seed is contributed by cartilage only that is nearly 90% so we can say that by, by calculating on weight basis proportional the percentage contribution to the total iron will be more from cartilage portion that is 60 to 70 percent uh, contribution was observed from cartilage only though the seed coat and embryo are having higher concentration since their contribution to the total weight is very less the total percentage contribution will be very less so here seed coat is contributing hardly 14 percent and embryo is contributing hardly 20 percent uh, towards total percentage iron for in case of a 6099 a similar kind of pattern was observed uh, in case of all the varieties where nearly 60 to 70 percent uh, of iron was contributed by total percentage was contributed by cartilage only so this is the graphical way where uh, blue line and uh, green line so that is seed coat and embryonic portions they are having higher concentrations uh, but if you come to the percentage contribution based on weight our cartilary portions are contributing nearly 60 to 70 percent of total percentage iron and like this we have separated the kernels like uh, seed coat uh, cartilage and uh, uh, embryonic portion and uh, if you look at the localization of zinc similar kind of pattern though uh, if you look at the analysis uh, results embryonic portion has contributed maximum for uh, uh, total zinc concentration that is 130s and 80s 84 and 128 but uh, upon weight basis if you calculate the total percentage was more from cartilary portion that was nearly 80 to 90 percent so similar pattern was observed though embryonic portion has recorded a, a major majority of the iron zinc concentration but uh, if you come to the percentage contribution it was maximum from the cartilary portion so coming to the 
final summary and conclusions of my work. And uh, for generation analysis, we have identified additive gene action. Uh, that's, it, it indicates that uh, selections in segregating generations uh, may be effective for uh, improvement of our traits. And uh, gene interaction was of uh, duplicate type. That means uh, it was a, it was estimated based upon the dominance as well as the dominance into dominance kind of epistasis. Both are having opposite signs. That's uh, we can say that it is of duplicate type. So coming to the correlation point, uh, iron concentration it has it has shown a positive significant correlation with the zinc concentration, suggesting a, a simultaneous improvement of uh, both the minerals at a time. And they have not shown uh, any kind of association with uh, pod yield. Uh, so we can say that uh, we can ensure that achieving higher yields with a higher higher iron concent iron or zinc concentration will be possible. And three markers each were identified for uh, iron as well as for zinc. So and these markers shown uh, some same kind of pattern uh, was observed in case of uh, other population also. That is validating population. Coming to the future plan for the work, the genotyping with the dot markers is going on. So it it will allow us to construct the linkage map. Uh, we would come to know the, we will come to know the position of the markers uh, in all the 20 linkage groups and uh, we are followed by we can identify the QTLs at genomic regions uh, responsible for the trite. So we can use uh, these QTLs or re genomic regions uh, by deploying into the plant uh, breeding perspective so that we can have a uh, high yielding varieties coupled with uh, improved uh, nutrient status, improved micronutrient status. Coming to the generation analysis, whatever the conclusions we have drawn, they are of uh, they are based on the digenic interactions, uh, including only two classes. So there may be a chances of trigenic and higher order, that is additive into additive into additive, additive into dominance into dominance like that. So there are chances. So there are there is a further need to study with more number of generations using more number of crosses. So I'll take this opportunity to thank and acknowledge. Uh, first of all, I'll start with my groundnut breeding team, and if, uh, I'm I'll be I am very happy with the. I am pleased with the support and uh, encouragement from entire staff of groundnut breeding. Uh, Dr. P. Janila, senior scientist, uh, uh, groundnut breeding, my co-chairperson, and Dr. T. V. Murali, visiting scientist, groundnut breeding, Surinder Singh Manohar, scientific officer, and uh, entire team of groundnut breeding. I will be very thankful to you, sir, for uh, uh, for a pleasant uh, en pleasant environment and en constant encouragement from your side. And I would like to thank uh, CEG team, ICRISAT. Uh, and uh, uh, in that, I would like to thank Ra Dr. Rajiv Varshini, sir, uh, for allowing me to work in the uh, such a prestigious laboratory. And uh, I thank Dr. Manish K. Pandey, sir, uh, scientist, groundnut genomics, Dr. Manish K. Vishwakarma, visiting scientist, uh, groundnut genomics, and entire groundnut genomics team for their support. And uh, I'll take this opportunity to thank my advisory committee, Dr. K. Radhika, chairperson, who is the who is, the who is responsible for me, for me to do research work at ICRISAT. And I would like to thank my members, Dr. VLN Reddy, Scientist Tirupati, RERS Tirupati, and Dr. V. Padma, Control of Examinations, Angro. And I would like to thank my department, that is Genetics and Plant Breeding, College of Agriculture, Rajendra Nagar. So, College of Agriculture, PJTSU, which was partly, which was formerly a part of Angro. So, I would like to thank CRP Grain Legumes, uh, and uh, Charles Renard Analytical Laboratory for their uh, timely uh, analysis, uh, timely analysis of iron and zinc status, iron and zinc content in uh, in our samples. So I would like to thank Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for providing financial assistance to me, and uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, LSU and uh, Library and Information Services, and uh, Housing and Food Services for providing a uh, tasty food and providing <laughs> providing accommodation. Uh, whenever I was needy and whenever I, 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 I was in requirement. So I would like to thank housing and food services. And lastly, I would like to thank my friends. Uh, without whom it would be impossible. Uh, they made me these two years of stay very memorable and uh, happily I have enjoyed these two, two and a half years of stay at Grisak. Thank you. Thank you one and all. Thank you, Sadaya. I think that's a, that's a nice presentation. Okay, so I think there will be some questions to him. Uh, did you find any association between uh, like a low iron with any chlorosis symptoms in the population or parents? No, I have not gone through such things. Yes. 
status yeah 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 so here uh, if you look at this uh, status of iron and zinc in the soil uh, they are uh, above well uh, critical limits so that that ensures that uh, that plant or experimental plot is not suffering with low iron and zinc status so this ensures a sufficient chlorophyll content in the plant this ensures a, a good amount of yield in all the plants <laughs> like to know that uh, your uh, estimation of genetic para uh, inheritance of the iron and zinc concentration shows that there are some uh, there are uh, some contribution of a native type of gene interaction in governing these two traits but most of the genetic variation is governed by the top either dominance or dominance and dominance type of uh, gene interaction so yeah. which method would you like uh, as a breeder straight line breeding procedures to improve these two traits since iron and zinc status was governed by additive gene action as i have said selection would be effective if you are doing selections in the generations it would be it would be effective but if a trait is governed by especially if you take groundnut crop if it is governed by the dominance into dominance or a dominance it would be almost impossible if you are if it is governed by those traits if it is governed by those gene actions uh, it only uh, matters if it is homozygously dominant if uh, that particular trait is homozygously dominant then we can sure we can ensure some kind of improvement otherwise if a trait is governed by dominance into dominance or dominance then no chance especially in groundnut point of view in other top it is possible if it is governed by dominance gene action then we will straight away go for hybrid breeding uh, whereas uh, in case of groundnut it is possible not possible so we cannot uh, improve such trait sadaya it's nice work I uh, hope these populations will be very useful for further mapping, fine mapping, and identifying candidate genes for molecular breeding. Uh, just one of but one or two, three slides I have seen that for pod yield in one slide, maybe you got 90% heritability, and in other slides maybe gene generation mean analysis you got some maybe around 60 or so. Okay. So do you have any region that what might be? what might be the reason that you got different heritability in these experiments reason is exactly both in both the cases the heritability was of higher magnitude anything above 60 we will consider it as a higher heritability then we can ensure that okay these two traits are highly transferable to the progeny uh, so the gap, the difference of 90 and 60 actually uh, What he did actually it looks to be not that much high heritable trait. That's what I'm actually okay. I'm asking. Not that maybe comparatively you are getting in all the experiments uh, like high heritability. That is fine. Yeah. But just I'm thinking why the trait like it is going even higher than the iron and zinc. So. <laughs> yeah, the mostly it is a quantitative trait. We can expect uh, so many interactions since uh, there is a sufficiency of uh, maybe yield was not at all affected here. Uh, since there is a uh, critical limit of the uh, iron and zinc so our uh, status is uh, well above the critical limits yield was not at all affected here both are equal in yield there was not much variation <laughs> okay what do you think uh, you found that in the embryo uh, i don't know zinc on this side as compared to the cotyledon what do you what is the reason what would be the reason means uh, embryo is the most active portion means for germination or uh, if it comes to the germination for, for point of view uh, 
embryo is the most important phase in the stage, most important part where all the chemical reactions are uh, taking place. So for all those chemical reactions, we need so many enzymes. For all those enzymes, we need uh, so so many cofactors like iron and zinc. So for so many enzymes, uh, iron and zinc uh, they are act like uh, uh, pushing elements for those enzymes. That's why we can expect uh, more amount of iron and zinc in the embryo. Also, have any enzymes been identified for this iron in groundnut? Iron and zinc accumulation? No. In groundnut. As I've said, that uh, this, uh, this groundnut is perfect for uh, ready to use therapeutic food. I said that. Uh, so, in what happens in most of the cases, uh, in cereals or in case of other millets, uh, for example, if you take it to rice consideration, where after uh, milling and everything, uh, we lose uh, most of the aluron layer and most of the things. We will get only polished portion, and there we will lose every iron, every much uh, most of the iron and zinc in that for in that context. Uh, that made me to go into the details, uh, go into the uh, localization work in case of groundnut. Here uh, we usually have a habit of uh, removing seed coat uh, uh, while eating or another processing, any processing purpose. I just want to know which part of the kernel uh, is contributing towards total iron, so that uh, we can uh, confirmly say that uh, we can confirm, we can have an idea what is the availability, bioavailability of uh, iron and zinc uh, to us, uh, to humans or. Thank you. Thank you very much.